3.5 is all about multiplying whole numbers. And this is a chunk where, again, we'll kind of go quickly through it, but we'll remind ourselves how to multiply and carry and so forth. Again, if you have crazy tricks on how to remember your multiplication table, that's fine. If you have to do repeated addition, that's fine. But ultimately, we do need to know our multiplication facts. And I know some people are like, well, how did you not? Some of us don't. We're not 100% comfortable. So um, no judging in this classroom. And I don't know why I have this. I want this one here, right? All right. So um, the first thing is using the properties of multiplication. The first property, again, I just mentioned it on uh, Thursday last week, we love zero, all right? Adding with zero and subtracting with zero, awesome. Same thing with multiplying. You guys know any number times zero, it gives you what? Zero. Yes, easy. And then one's kind of the same idea, right? Anytime you multiply by one, you're going to get that same number, okay? And remember, the whole idea, I think this is something that like we get, um, feel like we're failed at when we're in elementary school. Multiplication is just repeated addition. So when you say, one times nine, it just, if you have one group of nine, how many things do you have? Nine. If you have two groups of nine, how many do you have? 18, because you have nine. And so that's something that kind of keep in mind as we go through these, all right? So just real quickly, guys, you probably don't even need me doing this stuff. What's the answer for A in example one? Zero. Zero. What's the answer for B? Eight. Eight. What's the example for C, or the answer? Well, no, because it's zero, so you got to be careful, because they're going to slip it between zero and one. Um, so that's zero, and then 75 and one. 75, all right? So anything multiplied by zero will give you zero. Anything multiplied by one will give you that number, okay? The next one is the community property of multiplication. It's just like addition, guys. It doesn't matter which way you multiply, you're going to get the same answer. So one, or what do they have? Nine times two is 18. And 2 times 9 is 18 as well. The whole idea there is that it's repeated addition, right? So addition can go both ways, so can multiplication, all right? Associative property, same idea. It doesn't matter who we multiply first. So 2 times 3 might be easier for you, and then 6 times 4, you get 24. Mm -hmm. Or you can do 3 times 4, 12, times 2, and get 24. So, um, just group how it makes it easiest for you. It's like, remember how I said kind of group into tens when you're adding? You can do such things when you're multiplying. All right, this is a new one. Somebody kind of started talking about it. I think it was in this class about like factoring and distributing. The distributive property means if you have this number out here, yes, you can do three plus four and get seven and seven times two is 14. Or it's the same thing as saying, hey, you can do two times three and two times four and add them. And so all they did was take 2 into 3, so they got 2 times 3. 2 into 4, they got 2 times 4 is 8. 8 plus 6 is 14. You get the same answer either way, okay? Have you guys seen that before, the distributive property? And just basically means this 2 is multiplied by everything inside the parentheses, and then you keep the sign the same. So like if that was a minus sign, it would stay a minus sign. If that's a plus sign, it stays. And you can have more than two things in there. You could have three things in your all right, so let's do these real quickly. Notice they don't even want us to answer it. They just want us to rewrite them using the distributive property, okay? So we're gonna first take six times four. So we'll just write that, six times four. And then what's the sign between four and five? A plus. And then we still need to take six times five and you just write it that way. They don't even want you to answer it, guys. They just want you to rewrite it. So they're just showing you, hey, 4 plus 5 is 9. Maybe you don't know what 9 times 6 is, but you do know what 4 times 6 is and 5 times 6 is, okay? And that might be an easier way to do that multiplication problem. 30 times 2, so we're going to write that first, 30 times 2. The sign's still a plus, and then what do we still need to write? 30 times 3. So maybe adding 60 and 90 and getting 150 is easier than doing 2 plus 3 is 5, 5 times 130 is 150. You choose which way you like. All right, this one, I probably wouldn't do this distributive property because what do 2 plus 8 add up to? 10, right? And isn't that easier to multiply 7 times 10 and just be done with 70? But we will appease them and do it still. 7 times 2 is 14 plus 7 times 8 is 56. And oopsie, I'm writing 56, but I want to write 7 times 8. 
I wouldn't do it this way, guys, on this one. Anytime you can get those powers of 10, I would stick with the powers of 10. All right, so the couple, uh, first couple on your worksheet and the first couple on your homework on my math lab will just have you rewriting the distributive property. You're not even solving anything. All right, so this is the actual multiplying of whole numbers, guys. It's very similar to addition where you start from the right, you move to the left, and once you get more than nine, you have to carry over. Is that all right? But instead of adding and regrouping, we're multiplying and regrouping. Uh, nine times six. Do you guys know the finger rule when it comes to nine times six? Did anybody ever teach you that? It's pretty cool. Okay, so I, I wish I could do this, but I probably need to do it on here. I'll do it up here first. Anytime you multiply by nine, whatever you're multiplying by, count over that many. So we're multiplying by six. So you go one, two, three, four, five, six. This is my six finger. You put it down, 54. So however many are to the left, how many, it's crazy how that works. Like nine times two is 18, right? So you go one, two, put that down, one, eight, 18. Do you guys see how I'm doing that? So the left is the 10 spot, the right is the one spot. Pretty cool, okay? You don't have to do that though. If you know nine times six is 54, that's, that's fine, okay? So six times nine is 54. We cannot put 54 down. What do we have to put down? The four. The four and carry the five. All right. Remember, these only hold the one. So when it comes to 54, the four is the one, the five is the tens we carry over. This is important because when it's addition, you could just start adding straight down. With multiplication, you actually have to multiply first, then add what you carry. All right. So we'll have six times two first. 12 plus the five will give us what? 17. So 174. All right, M multiplying by single digits isn't bad, right? Like, you just kind of just go straight across, right? Five times eight, 40. So I'm going to put the zero because that's my one spot, and I'm going to carry my four because that's my tens. But you must do five times four first, which is 20, and then 20 plus four is 24, okay? So I'm going to put the four down, carry the two, and then five times six is what? 30 plus two, 32. And you can put the comma there if you want to, okay? We are on the top of the second page, all right? All right, when does it start getting a little tricky? It, the, the math itself is not a whole lot different. It's just that when we um, go to shift and multiply by the 8, we have to make sure we line things up appropriately. And that's because we're not really multiplying by 8. We're really multiplying by 80. So that's why we shift. You know how you're like supposed to leave a spot or put a zero there? Because we have to go to the other um, unit, all right? So we have one times six is what? <coughs> six. One times zero, love it. And then one times three is three. Oh, we know that, right? One times any number is that number. So it makes sense that it's 306. Then what we're going to do is we're going to go back through and multiply everything by eight, but we have to remember it's not by eight. It's technically by 80. So we'll put a zero there to hold our one spot, and then we can go move to the eight and do the math like we did before. Eight times six, 48. I always, I don't know why I always remember that. Six times eight is 48. I don't know why from like my third grade lesson. So we're going to put an eight there and carry our four because again, you always put that lower digit. And then yes, eight times zero is zero, but what do we still need to add on to it? Four. The four. And then eight times three, 24. 24. And again, guys, if you're like, oh my gosh, Daryl, or not Daryl, Darren, he's doing that so quickly. Like I can't do that. That's okay. Did I put too many fours? No, that's right. Um, that's okay. You can come over here and add eight three times if you need to. Okay? There's always going to be plenty of space to work, whatever you need to do there. At that point, you just add straight up and down. Carry if you need to. So six plus zero is six. Zero plus eight is eight. Three plus four is seven. And then there's the 24. So does 24,000 look okay? Okay. All right, so the next one is the same idea, but when we go, we're going to shift twice when we get to the one, because we're not really multiplying by one, we're multiplying by 100. So we're saving a spot for the ones and the tens, and then we'll go move. All right, so two times six, 12. Put your two, the one spot, and carry your 10, the one. Two times two is four, plus one is five. Is that all right? And then two times seven is 14. So basically, we just doubled 740 or 726, all right? Then we're like, okay, we're going to multiply by the 4, but we're not really multiplying by 4. We're multiplying by 40, so we need the 0 to hold our 1s, and we can go straight to the 10 spot. 
four times six is 24. 24. So I'm going to put my four, carry my two. Sometimes you might cross out the one and then put the two up there. Four times two is eight. But what do I still need to do? Add two more. So that's 10. Is that all right? I'll put my zero, carry my one. Four times seven? 28. 28 plus the one will get us 29. All right. So now I'm going to cross out all those little guys up there. That's the hardest part. Like, see all those slashes to keep track of, you know, which one you need to use this time. We're going to go multiply. I'm riding downhill, aren't I? We're going to go multiply by the one, but we have to remind ourselves it's not really by the one. It's really by 100. So we're going to save the tens in the one spot. And then what's great, guys, you can kind of do this pretty quick because we're just multiplying by one, right? So what's 726 times one? 726. You're like, no, Molly, I don't want those shortcuts. Still go six, two. Seven. That's absolutely fine. Six, two, seven. And then we're just going to add them all up and see what we get. Two plus zero and zero is two. Five plus four plus zero is nine. Four plus six is ten. So I'm going to put my zero, carry my one. One plus one is two, plus nine is eleven, plus two is thirteen. Does that look right so far, guys? One plus two is uh, three, plus, oh gosh, okay, that's a big guy. So 103,092, is that what you guys get? Mm -hmm. I missed a zero. And I really need to switch my um, pencil out because I'm losing my eraser. And I'll write all these up over here so we know what our final answers are. All right. Are we good with the multiplication? Okay. Just like I said, we, just a quick refresher. So when do we need to use multiplication? That's kind of the next objective is just different word problems in life where multiplication is used, all right? On Thursday last week, we learned about perimeter. How do you find perimeter of any shape? You just add up all the sides. So it doesn't matter what shape it is, as long as all the sides are labeled for you, you can just add them all up. Area is a different geometric term, and that's actually the inside of a shape. And so like if we needed to carpet this room or paint the wall, we would have to know the area of the floor or the area of the the wall to know how much paint or carpet. So it's two dimensions, all right? And those formulas are a little bit um, more specific based on the shape, okay? Does anybody remember the area formula for a rectangle? Area equals length times width or base times height. Length times width or Area equals base times height. You can use either one, where you would call the, the, the horizontal one your base, the vertical one your height, or this is your length, this is your width. It doesn't matter. Another thing we need to keep in mind with area, since it's two dimensions, what do we do to our units always? We have to square them. So that's square feet, square meters, feet squared, feet, meters squared, that idea. Okay. So the state of Wyoming is basically a rectangle, and its length is 360 miles and its width is 280 miles, find its area. So the area is length times width. So area is going to be its length, 360, times its width, 280. Well, how many of us can sit here and do multiplication horizontally? Not me, okay? So I'm going to leave a blank for my answer, but I'm going to come over here and actually do the math over here on the side, okay? So 360 times 280. Is that all right? When we go over here to do the math, the first rung with the ones is just zero. So what do we know about zero times zero, zero times six, and zero times three? It's all zeros. Some people just skip it and go right to the next. I don't. I'm like, no, I like to show it, okay? Zero, zero, and zero. You don't have to do that. I just like to kind of keep my pattern the same. All right, so then I'm going to 8, but it's not really 8. It's 80, so I'm going to put a 0 to hold my 10 spot, okay? And then I'm going to do 8 times 0, which is 0. 6 times 8 is 48. Remember that little jig. 8 times 3, we did that already. That was 24, plus 4 more gets us up to what? 28. All right, last but not least, this 2 is not really a 2. It's a 200. So I'm going to put two zeros to hold my ones and my tens and jump over to the two. Two times zero is zero. Two times six is 12. I'll put my two, carry my one. Two times three is six, plus one is seven. Does that look right? Whew, okay. Lots of zeros to kind of keep track of and add up. This first two columns over here are zero. Then we have an eight. 
Can you guys see that? I can move it up a little bit. And then eight plus two gives us a 10, so we carry our one. Oh, is it perfectly? Wow, okay, so it's perfectly 100, because we have one plus two is three plus 100. So what does that end up being? 100,800, does that look right? And then I'll say, well, what? 100,800 what? Miles. miles squared. Or square miles. And some people ask, well, where does that unit come from? Why are they squared? Well, technically, what's right here? Mile. And what's right here? Miles. And what happens to, when you take a number times itself? You square it, right? Four times four is four squared. So miles times miles is miles squared. So it's over 100,000 square miles of land. Has anybody been to Wyoming? I haven't either. I have not been to the Northwest, but I see pictures. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. All right, last but not least, page three are just word problems. And so my key thing is, I know you know how to do the multiplication. What words do we pick out in these word problems so that we know it's multiplication? Because when you get to a test, the word problems are just going to be thrown at you. And you're like, OK, am I adding, subtracting, multiplying, dividing? OK? So, so a particular computer printer can print 16 pages per minute in color. How many pages can it print in 45 minutes? When it comes to multiplication, they're always going to give you like a scenario for one thing and then ask you about multiple versions of that, right? So notice it told us how many you could do in one minute, but then it asked us about multiple minutes. And so we're going to do what operation? Multiply. So we're going to take 16 times 45. So they told us one scenario. So maybe a treat bag has five things, but they're giving it to 30 kids. How many treats are there? That kind of thing. So they give you one scenario but then you have to spread it out in multiple. So this one was one minute, it could do 16 pages. So that was the one scenario. So how many can it do in 45 minutes? Five times six is 30. We'll put the zero, carry the three. Five times one is five plus three is eight. So that's 80. Then we'll go to the four, but it's really a 40. So we're gonna put a zero to hold the spot. Four times six is 24. And then four times one is four plus two, six. Does that look right, guys? And then we're just going to add straight down. 0 plus 0 is 0. 8 plus 4 is 12. Carry your 1, so 7. So 720, is that what you got for your answer? But 720 what? Pages. Pages. Good job. So in under an hour, it can print over 700 pages. All right, let's see if we can kind of get that same verbiage here with example 8. Can Shamira purchase DVDs and CDs through a club? You guys are probably way too young for that. Do you guys remember like Scholastic where you could order books? Like, in, so they used to have that for like DVDs and CDs, like when you were in junior high, okay? So can Shamira purchase DVDs and CDs through a club? Each DVD was priced at $11 and each CD cost $9. Ken bought eight DVDs and five CDs. Find the total cost. Well, total cost always means some, right? So we're going to eventually add, before we add, we have to figure out, well, how much did he purchase in DVDs? How much did he purchase in CDs? And notice again, it gave you one scenario. The price of DVDs and the price of one CD, but then it gave you multiple, okay? So I'm going to label, let's label DVDs. How much does a DVD cost? 11, and how many did he buy? Eight. So let's figure out how much he spent just in DVDs. Don't you love multiplying by 11, right? 11 is that double number. Whatever you're multiplying by, you just double that number. So that's $88, right? CD, how much does a CD cost? Nine. And how many did he buy? Five. So that's $45. Okay. So if it asks how much do you spend in DVDs and CDs each, this is kind of how I'd be looking for its answers. But it said total cost. So what do we have to do at the very end? Add the two together, OK? We spent $88 on DVDs, $45 on CDs. Let's figure out what that total bill was at the end. 8 plus 5 is 13. Put your 3, carry your 1. 1 plus 8 is 9 plus 4. Is that another 13? So it's 133, but 133 what? Dollars. You got it. Oopsie, you can't see it. Is that all right? And he had kind of just pay attention to 
um, how it asks. And again, the more work you show, the, the better. So like this one, if you just gave me 88 and 45, you'd probably get four of the five points. Where's the fifth point that you missed? You didn't add it at the end, okay? So again, just do as much in the right direction that you can. All right, last but not least, example nine. If an average book contains 163 words, estimate by rounding each number to the nearest hundredth, so we want to round first, the total number of words contained in 391 pages, okay? So I think it's missing a word. I think if an average book contains 163 words per page, let's add that on there. Okay, so how many total words are there per page if we have to round to the nearest hundredth? Well, you got it. So we have this one, but what's behind the one? Six. So remember, five and above, give it a shove. So it's going to be 200 words per page. And then how many pages do we have? Roughly 400. And notice it, it again, guys. How do I know that's multiplication? Because it gave us one scenario, 163 on one page. And I want to know 400 pages or what, you know. So it, it gives you one scenario and then multiple. All right, we're multiplying by a lot of zeros here. I'm going to do it the long way, but then I'll show you the trick that most of you guys probably know, all right? Zero along across the board is three zeros. Is that all right? When we go to the second zero, it's not really in the ones, it's in the tens. So I have to hold my one spot, and then I'm going to have zeros across the board three times again. Is that all right? And then when I go to my four, it's not really four, it's in the hundred spot, so I have the ones and tens. And then I'm going to have zero, zero, eight. Does that look all right? You add those zero, 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 eight. So what do we get? 80,000 what? Words. Words. Good. Okay. Because like, And again, if you forget your unit, I'm probably taking off a point. But if you put a unit and it's wrong, you'll get half a point. It's like you might put pages, so you get half a point for that. Knowing that there was a unit, you just don't have it right. So this is 800,000 words. Do you use, um, I, should, I was going to say does anybody, but a bunch of you know. What's the shortcut when you're multiplying by a bunch of zeros? Do you remember that at all? Would it be just adding the zeros? Yes. Okay. So what you do, as long as there's no decimals involved, all right, you multiply the two numbers. <laughs> two times four is eight. And then you count how many zeros total you have. How many zeros total do we have? Four. four. How many zeros total did we have at, on our answer? Four. Four. Right? Ten times ten, we all know that's a hundred. But each 10 has a zero, so there's 100, all right? So that is section 1.5. Are there any questions on that?